it's great to be able to make a living, a bigger living like, than you would have expected from life anyway. Me making a living, that was like one of the biggest goals. And I already reached that in 2013. In 2020, I, I had my first year where I had like a six figure income. It, it changes a lot about the way you think about the world as well and like the opportunities you, you kind of see. It's like, oh, wait, I never thought I would be able to do this. Might as well give it a shot. I'm in this privileged position. But yeah, man, I'm really thankful to you yeah. and to BeatStars that you guys are providing the platform, not only for me, but the hundreds, the thousands of lives you guys have changed and kind of empowered. Because I feel like without that, there would be so many more producers struggling out there, yeah. especially the producers who are living in remote, in remote areas, right. in whatever country they're living and I, you know it yourself mm -hmm. they're they're from everywhere i feel blessed for them and i feel blessed for myself to be part of that movement and that being the driving force to me living the best possible life Beat stars the foundation the precedence we flying flags in every city global residence and we killing off the masters ghetto slave driving bastards we making hits faster than you can think we're on the brink of revolution all my indie music makers here's your restitution uh we got the game in a chokehold not paying the creators is a no-no i got the smoke road for all the fam bam today i'm sitting with my homie one of the beat stars all stars one of the people that I look, to, look up to in this community, uh, my guy Tantu Beats, straight out of Utrecht, yes. Netherlands, uh, is, in, is here in Austin, Texas on my first podcast, and I'm honored to have you, my brother. Man, I am honored to being on your first podcast. Is this the first like real-life podcast you ever recorded? I think so. Damn. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, I'm honored, man. So I'm nervous, man. I, listen, I'm nervous because um, I'm... I'm private in public, but I, I like, you know, it's, a, it's, 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 um, I think there's a lot of people that would learn from my experiences as an yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that would learn from yours. Might not be the most perfect advice or information no, or but your journeys, but we, you know. we have had so many good conversations through the years. Right. And I'm yeah. sure you've had so many powerful conversations with so many people, so many entrepreneurs before it's, it's a waste to not share that. Right. So. I think it's uh, it makes a lot of sense. Agreed, man. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. Um, how's how's your experience been so far here in Austin? Great. Yeah. Great. So obviously, like it's only been two days now. Um, so I flew out to LA um, about ten days ago, mm -hmm. just to uh, to network, meet people that I've spoken to uh, online for years, actually create that physical, real connection, um, and obviously you asked me to come to austin for a couple of days so here i am uh man we had some great barbecue yesterday so yeah. uh really happy uh yeah really happy being here man hell yeah man I, I love uh having you here it's not your first time here in austin no. uh this is your second time yeah oh yeah the, what happened the last time you were here the last time i, I was <laughs> here well I, you were there for sure so last time i was here it was in uh around the end of 2017 mm -hmm. when i uh i asked to intern with you because mm -hmm. I was still in uh, university studying mm -hmm. music and technology. Yeah. And in the third year, we had to do a three-month internship. And I was already selling beats, of course. Was already doing that for a living, paying my university through that as well. Right. And uh, I was like, damn, I should use that opportunity to actually go to the United States because I had never been there before and actually meet the people that provide me with the service, beat stars, that help me sell the beats and actually get into the environment of the people who are actually buying the beats as well. Because I had never been to the States, like I said, but 80% mm. of all my sales were coming from the States. Mm. So my living was provided by people from the United States, but I had no idea how the culture felt. So mm. it, was, it only made a lot of sense to, uh, I think I put on Twitter around like January, 2017, hey, I'm uh, looking for an internship in North America, so right. we're music related. Mm -hmm. And we had just been talking about me joining BeatStars and, uh, and you replied to my tweet. And that was the beginning of it. So then I came here for three months, of course, built the BeatStars studio uh, elsewhere in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we did a lot of fun projects. Mm -hmm. Got some, I got some great information game there from you. Definitely learned a lot. And uh, yeah, man, that was a very interesting, insightful first experience in Austin. But now we're here four and a half years later, so. Yeah, man, 2017 feels yeah. like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Um, 
But I think one really unique experience that we shared, though, was uh, we were part of the One Week Notice album project. Let's put a hand select, hand selected four or five artists and a couple producers. Let's put them in a studio. Let's put them in a house and have them make make an album in one week. And you were interning around that same time when that was all being put together. It wasn't really the plan. You didn't know that that, that was going to like, you were going to fall in during, during no, the turn. No. And um, so who were, who were some of the artists? Who were some of the artists and producers that was on that project? Can you explain a little bit? Uh, like, who was on so there? they brought two producers, mm -hmm. uh, Kato, Kato on the track yeah. and DJ Hoppa. Uh, some of the artists that were invited for the project were Dizzy Wright, um, the guys from Audio Push, mm -hmm. uh, Demrick, um, Reezy, I believe was his name. Jer with Jeremy Jer Benson. Oh, Jeremy Jeremy Benson, Benson, of course. Um, uh, the, the bunch of the, the Emilio, the Emilio, Emilio, yeah, Rojas. Emilio, yeah, yeah, of course, really. So really many, cool so many amazing yeah. different characters, different from different backgrounds. Latino rapper, Jaron being from the south, yeah, uh, Demrick and, and it was uh, a big melting pot. Yeah, Demrick, <laughs> I think it was East Coast and Dizzy Wright from Vegas, and it was just, it was just, it was super cool. Yeah. But one thing, one thing that really like, um, really stood stood out to me was you were man you were someone that's not afraid to like jump at an opportunity even if you are not fully prepared to like yeah take take on the opportunity oh, yeah, at that yeah, time yeah. we'll get more into your career and stuff but i just would just point out because you're here in austin and the last time you're here was was during that project and I'll, I'll share i'll just share with the people that you know we didn't have an engineer on on board for the project and tantu was raised his hand and says i'll do it and we we were working in, within pro tools and um, you didn't have that much experience with Pro no. Tools, and you're running a session with all these experienced and really successful artists and producers, and you you handle this that whole week that whole week, um, recording, mixing, mastering, like yeah. it was crazy <laughs> all not, all the hours of the night. Yeah. Um, wh what did you get from that? What you what did you get from that experience? What, what I, was that like for you as a producer, as an engineer, as a? <clears throat> so that was definitely back in uh, back in a time where I definitely had some. I was definitely I was touching the waters of trying to be an engineer as well, mm -hmm. besides being a producer, because I had been making beats by that time for already eight years, because I started in 2008, 2009. But I was always intrigued about like, okay, how do good mixes, like, how does it change your experience of music? To me, it looked like a great opportunity to kind of have like a real fast paced learning experience in how you record, mix and master a full album, because I did all three of those in a, a time span of literally two weeks, which was very, I mean, it was, it, it, it took a lot for me. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it was very, it was heavy to do, but what I learned from it is definitely that I kind of learned to appreciate my limits as well, where I definitely, there, there were times where I kind of felt like I, I crossed my, my own boundaries, mm. uh, just because I wanted something so much. But I definitely learned mm. to be more mindful about these boundaries as well and to not be afraid to be vocal uh, about mm. these. Because mm. I definitely had to be at some point, because, uh, you know, you're working with eight artists at the same time. Like yeah. you have to kind of right. keep yourself together, because if you if you crash, like if, if I would crash right there, like the whole I project would crash. No, yeah, the whole project would crash. So um, that was definitely a good thing to learn. And it also made me realize like after, especially like after one or two years after that, I was like, okay, maybe I don't think being an engineer is for me. I might just hmm. really focus on the production side because that's where I really find the most fun. Mm -hmm. That's where the, that's where the magic happens for me. Yeah. That's important. So you, you like really got put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, um, exposed who exposed your strengths and weaknesses and but um and then discovered that hey engineering is not for me maybe i need i don't i don't need to like tackle all of these different yeah. roles and responsibilities within the ecosystem and yeah. of of the music production stack of like responsibilities yeah, and you, you focus on your strength and, and i think that's really important yeah. and i think a lot of a lot of creators get lost with trying to do everything oh yeah a lot of creators get lost yeah. a lot of producers get lost with trying to do everything mm -hmm. um I mean, we're being we're, self yeah. conscious, like being self reflective on on those th kind of things throughout your career. How how is how have you used moments like that to 
um, pivot. Mm-hmm. And and I guess let's even take it back to like, why did you even want to become like an independent music entrepreneur in the first place? Yeah. Why? Why? Because usually, you know, you think about music producers and creators, and it's about the art. It's about the music. Yeah. You don't really doesn't you don't really focus on the business part. You don't really focus a lot. Of, a lot of artists don't really focus on. Yeah the entrepreneurial part and the responsibilities and the heavy lifting that goes with that. You know, what, what made you focus with that? And then talk about some of those pivots. Talk about some of those, some of those, some of those moments. Yeah. Some of those moments where you had to like shift and like reflect on yourself. I'm like, yeah, that's not me. This is me. Yeah. So I think most of, so uh, regarding the, the pivotal moments, I think most of these moments have definitely been like me having set certain goals for myself. Like, Oh, I I really would love, would love to, work with this kind of person or I would really I would really want to have like this amount of sales or I really would like to like reach this this goal in on the production side or whatever and uh not being able sometimes like you know like in in a career of 12 years you you create goals for yourself you hit them you miss them and especially like when I miss them I was always very self-reflective on why did I miss them and more often than not the answer was because I didn't dedicate Uh, my full focus to whatever I was trying to do. So let's say I want to have a number one hit song as a producer, but I'm also mixing other people's songs. That doesn't add up. Because if you want to be a number one billboard producer, for instance, you're going to have to dedicate your time to that because there's thousands of, maybe hundreds of thousands other, other cats trying to reach that same goal and they're dedicating their time to it. So you kind of got to compete. So a lot of the moments where I was like, okay, I got to like refine my focus were the moments where I realized like, oh damn, I just, I wasn't able to reach this goal. I'm like, I'm from top of my head, I'm not sure like what kind of goals I would be talking about now, but definitely looking back at it and feeling how focused I am right now compared to, let's say a couple of years ago, I can definitely tell that these were very important moments to me. Um, but then the, regarding your, your question about entrepreneurship, like why, why would you, you want to be a, yeah, you did it in college, right? Like you started, you started your business in, while you were in college while being in high school, high school. I think that would, I was, so yeah, I was 14 when I started making beats and I was 16 or 17 when I created, uh, together with a high school friend, we created my first web shop where I started selling non-commercial mm-hmm. or non non-exclusive licenses right, right, right. <laughs> definitely commercial right. um to rappers and artists so that was in 2010 already um and why i did that that's it's an interesting question because what got me to do that because i could have also just only worked on the beats and just kind of find my way through whatever was would be handed to me but i always felt like i wanted control over my own destiny in a way so control over um things that are you know i love doing things i love creating things i love putting effort in things and see it flourish and like use that to kind of build towards my goals and i definitely feel like one of the reasons why i probably started being an entrepreneur so so early already, because I, I was only making beats for like one or two years, and the market wasn't that big yet. It wasn't that well known. It was kind of frowned mm-hmm. upon, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but it felt, I felt like selling beats, for instance, was a great way to kind of take control over um, just the, ma- the fact that if I put energy in this, something will happen. And that's on me. I don't have to rely on anyone else mm. handing me anything. Mm. I mean, I'm in the I'm in the Netherlands, so like mu like worldwide musically, there's not that much going on there anyway, right? Uh, maybe for like EDM music or sure. anything like that. But uh, for me to reach my goals, I needed to. I I, c- I couldn't rely on like bumping into some crazy A and R into the into the streets of LA because right. I was in Utrecht. Right. I was in O30. I was just like yeah. in in a small city, and um, so yeah, it was just yeah, like I said, it was taking control over my own destiny. Taking control over your own yeah. destiny, developing developing a craft that you can control how far you can go with it, 
and um, and turning it into a product as you yeah. as you saw the emergence of kind of like the online digital oh, yeah. entrepreneur like okay maybe there is a market even though this is yeah. frowned upon yeah even this and when you say like you know a lot of people you know i guess from your perspective you're in this like location where industry for you're the type of music that you were making really was non-existent and you're you're hearing when you you see when you say it's frowned upon you're 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 referring to like people that lives lived in like really um, music industry hubs like Los mm -hmm. Angeles or New York that had the luxury, had the luxury yeah. of like operating operate or Nashville, right? They had the luxury of operating um, within a city that, you know, had already a music ecosystem yeah. and they can operate in that way and they can, you know, kind of navigate and figure out their, their role in there. So, um, but no one, no one really, um, no one really considered you, you know, kind of in a sense, the people like you, right? People yeah, like you, yeah. even here in rural, rural America, like no one, no one considered those people. No yeah. one considered, no one like validated their artistic con con contribution yep. to the global music industry. And, um, and I'm so happy that you believed in yourself and didn't, yeah. didn't pay attention to, um, the, the, the people that were kind of like frowning upon, you know, independent entrepreneurship, independent, like put self-determination, yeah. build your own business. And you, you, you blocked that noise and you, you worked on something that was empowering to yourself and yeah. to your family and to your brand. And, um, there's something to be said about that, man. There's something to be said. And especially now when you're saying that, you know, when I hear you say, you know, um, my, customer bases all over the world. I, I don't just collaborate with people in the Netherlands. Like I'm collaborating mm -hmm. with yeah. people in the United States, oh, yeah. all these rappers, all these artists, recording artists, yeah. singers, vocalists, you know, whatever it is. And it's, yeah. it's, it's a this global music economy. And yeah. you are to me like, you know, a walking testament to the success of that model. You know, um, people may not know like what, you know, what are some of your contributions other than, of course, licensing to thousands and thousands and thousands of recording artists yeah. and giving them a canvas and a landscape to express themselves, which alone is powerful, yeah, oh yeah. which alone is powerful, yeah. where with no monetary return is powerful, giving yeah. giving another human being their the ability to express themselves artistically, yeah. emotionally and develop that way alone is fulfilling and it's powerful. It's beautiful. But we're lucky to live in a world where these things can be monetized and these things can be, oh, yeah. and, and art and art can be compensated yeah. and you've successfully done that. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's beautiful. Tell me a little bit about your, the global contribution that you've had with maybe some, some like, Thank some songs, some songs. Yeah, that, some notable that, some songs. Some notable songs. Yeah, yeah. Just, just so people know that you're, you know, when yeah. this beat maker <laughs> sitting in the it, it his, mama's house, his mama's house <laughs> and you track like making beats, going to university, like, you know, tell them what what was able to come to fruition in those in those bedrooms at mama's house. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, well, obviously, uh, I had a couple platinum songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I produced the very first single for uh, Paulo Londra, which is like one of the biggest Argentinian uh, rap artists. Yeah, he actually made his very first single on a beat of mine. He found on my YouTube. Amazing. And uh, yeah, he forgot to license it. He didn't <laughs> license it, so I kind of reached out to him like, "Hey, I see your song is blowing up. It had like a million views." So we we cut a deal for that. Cool. And um, so that's one very great example of how my beat. It was the start of like a huge career. Like anyone I meet from Argentina knows him. Anyone, probably a lot of people from Latin America as well. Um, but so yeah, man. And there's many examples like that. I worked with Coscaluela, it's a Puerto Rican uh, artist. Uh, it's, it's like more of an OG, but really, really big as well. Um, I worked with the Higher Brothers, which is a Chinese rap group, which uh, we're pretty big in the U.S. for a mm -hmm. moment as well, working with like Rich Bai and Joji. They released our songs on 88 Rising, the label. Um, actually even got to meet them, go physically in the studio with them when they performed in Amsterdam. That was really wild. 
um because you know like you usually don't get to meet the people who rap on your beat especially if they find them online right uh, so f- flipping that online transaction into a real life moment they even got me on stage with them sold out show they asked me on stage they performed the song they made on my beat and That's uh, love, man. yeah and then the next day i booked the studio and they came over and we we, we cut like three tracks which came out a couple of months later so that was great um i created um two years ago i created a song with baby no money it's a it's a big newer artist mm-hmm. uh from mm-hmm. canada um man so there's there's about, so many what about, examples. What about like like Ty Ty Verdes? Oh yeah, Ty Verdes. Like yeah, that's an upcoming guy for yeah. sure right now. Like he's getting really big. I'm so inspired by him. Yeah, I'm so inspired by him. Artist. Ty is like, um, you know, when we think about like the artist side mm-hmm. of what the power of what beat stars can do yeah. and connecting connecting our creators, not yeah. just helping the producers with their entrepreneurial goals, but also the recording artists lay their their um their landscapes, yeah. you know, for music. Ty is, in a, is a great example, is a great example yeah. of a kid on, the, on TikTok, basically, right? Yeah. Investing in himself and, you know, licensing beats on yeah. BeatStars, working with producers like you, um, shooting amazing quality content, oh, yeah. and really nailing down, like, a niche audience for himself, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's... It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. And you, so you, you guys, you guys have done some stuff. You guys have done. Some yeah. Stuff so there. I did a, uh, I made a collab beat with GC. Mm. Shout out to GC. Oof. Killer. That's another, uh, Killer. That's another beat guy. Yeah. Incredibly interesting guy as well. Uh, but I, I, I did a couple of collaborations with him and one of them, I guess got picked up. We might by have to call this uh, podcast, the beat God podcast. We might have to change it after yeah. season, episode one. The beat God. The oh. big gods. <laughs> gods. <laughs> Damn. I, <laughs> that's like Kanye style <laughs> right there. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so uh, we, we just had a collab beat and it kind of blew up. Yeah. And uh, out of all the people who found it, also Ty for Dads found it. Mm-hmm. They, li- they licensed it non-exclusively. Yeah. Um, now he signed to like Sony, I think. I don't know what label. I don't know. Oh, I think maybe definitely one of uh, uh, like some sort of joint venture major yeah. something. Yeah. But yeah, he's blowing up. So yeah. that's that's definitely a big one on the credit list as well. It's what interesting. Do think, what do you think yeah. about that? So like, Tansu, you you know you you came uploading beats on YouTube early two thousand. You said two thousand what? Two thousand. I uh, my first beat uploads were in two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Okay. It's a long time. So you're though. uploading beats two thousand eight. <laughs> long time, and you're only twenty eight. I'm twenty eight. Yeah. You're only so, twenty eight. Yeah. Holy shit, man! You've been doing this shit since you were really young, and though like. I mean, smartphones and really like mm. media and social media, even during that time, wasn't really that mm. prominent, man. Like this, connecting and working with musicians. Yeah. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams that this, the music industry now, how it's being powered by the online community, mm-hmm. the people that were frowning upon it are now yeah. like, whoa, this thing is like powering yeah. the whole music industry now. Did you ever think that at some point you were going to have this like, role in this whole like explosion of how music is made interesting question um, did you think about those kind of things like did i was you think about i was where, definitely where i was I, I i was kind of manifesting for myself like at a very young age already like okay i'm going to the united states at some point having no idea like when that would be and, and like what would be the driving force behind me going there whether it is an internship or right now to do studio work in los angeles and meet you up meet up with you here um but i always definitely had some sort of feeling like i'm destined to kind of push it further than my own country Mm -hmm. than the netherlands because i always was just so interested in uh the music culture that was created in the united states that's what i love about being here anyway like being closer to the places where the music was made that i that i'm listening to that i'm used to listen to that i grew up with Right. It, it, there's something powerful in that and it kind of it gives me a lot of motivation but also a lot of context around like mm-hmm. okay this is where it was created and this is probably what it took in this environment but if I would have ever thought that it was it would be like the online producer community that would be the driving force behind me going these places and, and reaching these goals I don't think so. It's hard, like 
it's hard to to foresee these things. Mm. I mean, y you were definitely one I of knew the. It. You were like a. You had like it, it all. It's almost like you had like a. How do you call it? Like a a. How did they call it? Like a ball where you. I did. Like where you see the future in. <laughs> I really did because. Yeah. Um, it was so personal to me from an experience, you know, from an experience side, you know, yeah. I experienced it from the artist side, yeah. you know, I was buying beats in AOL chat rooms. I was buying beats mm -hmm. in AOL. You guys don't even know what the fuck that is. Like I was buying beats in AOL chat rooms in 1996, 97, maybe. Yeah. Right. 97. Crazy. I was in chat rooms and buying beats from various producers in Japan, Alabama. Yeah. Uh, Paris, France, and um, I didn't. I don't know if you know how. You, I don't. You you know why? Like I kind of wanted to start. Why this. you? Uh, yeah. Why, because why, there was no. I couldn't find dope producers in yeah. my in my area, and I had I had moved from the East Bay, um, mm -hmm. right outside of Oakland in Hayward, California. I had moved to South San Francisco. I was 16 years old, and I didn't have a car. Yeah. And, um, we just had got our first computer in the house and, um, I was bored of shit. I didn't have any friends, but I wrote music. That's all yeah. I did. I've been writing music since I was like nine years old. It was like therapy, man. It was just like emotionally, it yeah. got me through everything as a teenager, especially yeah. oh, when you lose I, your, all your friends, yeah. you lose, you lose everything. You know I what I'm saying? Imagine. Yeah. And we don't, you don't have, we have FaceTime to call my homies up. You know, no. or get on the Xbox and play. No. <laughs> Yo, let's play. You know what I'm saying? Play, yeah, play, no, play. It's, it's lonely. It, it was it, lonely, it gets bro. It boring and lonely, right? It was dark. It was yeah. dark. And it, music got me out of my darkness, you yeah. know, and um, writing to it and finding producers. And um, I would haggle. I didn't, have no, I didn't have no money. So I would haggle with producers in these chat rooms. Yeah. And I'll say, yo, I'll give you 20 bucks. Just send me the MP3. And the internet was so fucking slow back then. You couldn't mm -hmm. download an MP3, bro. <laughs> For real? You couldn't download an MP3. So damn. these guys would have to like mail me a CD, you know, mail, oh, mail me a damn. CD. Yeah, okay. mail me a CD with a, with an, with a, like an agreement. Would they ever put like the track outs on the CD? Yeah, as well? sometimes really? if wow. I if, if I asked for it, okay. yep, and or paid for it, yeah, you know, or paid for it, yeah. And I just thought, man, this is so inefficient. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it like, is. <laughs> I was like, wow. this is so inefficient. This is like blocking my creativity. Yeah, you know, blocking my creativity. And it was such a big problem. It's like one of those aha moments. It's like, you know, with with a lot of like products that you see, you're like, whoa, that's solving such a big problem. Like, duh, right? Especially when you experience the problem over and over. Yeah. It was really easy for me to kind of like understand that, um, yeah, there's millions of rappers out here and they're not all wanting to work with Joe Schmo producer mm -hmm. in uh, in their local cities. And and right. with people like you in your in your um in your situation where there might be a rapper in your little city that doesn't have access to a hip hop producer because it's EDM focused, but I'm a yeah. I'm a rapper or yeah. I'm a singer, you know what I'm saying? You know, and so that was um that was the big aha moment for me, how it helped me personally and mm -hmm. got me through it and developed me. And I was like, Man, this shit is gonna this is this is gonna take a life of its own. Yeah. This shit's going to take a life of its own. That's wild. Just build it. What's up, everybody? This is A. Batchon, the host of the Pay the Creators podcast here at BeatStars. Please make sure you like and subscribe across all the different platforms you listen to the podcast so you don't miss out on these amazing stories from all the people in our community. Peace. That's wild. Yeah, it's. It, I guess it's It's. It's part of like globalization in general, right? Because yeah. I, I grew up watching skateboard movies. Cause yeah, I would, talk about like, that. Yeah, so I'm, I've am i always been a great skateboarder. Or yeah. great, I don't mean like I'm not the best, but like... I've always been like super interested in skateboarding. I've yeah. I started skateboarding when I was ten years old. When I was fourteen, uh, I got a really bad knee injury, mm -hmm. so I couldn't skate for a year. So and and like skateboarding was everything to me, like literally right. everything. I would right. go to school and skateboard and do my homework. Like that was literally the only thing I was doing. And then I couldn't do that for a year. So that's that's that sucks real bad. In, in long long term yeah. injuries are not fun. No. So that's actually <laughs> why I started making music because I was kind of homebound so uh, okay hold on yeah. so let me stop you because this is we're, we're talking about self-made and it being independent and driving your own journey yeah but you're a kid yeah you're a kid 14, yeah. how did you get the means to like get a computer and 
Like, yeah. So like I, get a, get some gear that mom and dad, like believe in your, in your dream. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I got my own computer probably like one year before I started making music. So I was already, right. I think when I, when I went, so in the Netherlands you have like, uh, I guess elementary school and then high school, there's no, no, no such thing as middle school. Right. Um, so when I was 12 and I went to high school, I think I got my first computer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also when like the first social media would pop up, like Facebook kind of became a thing it was like 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I did have my own computer. I did have like very, very shitty speakers. I, I have no idea what brand <laughs> they were really shitty. I had, I had like, I think like earbuds, which were like probably like five, five bucks. Yeah. Um, and how I did get the means, I mean, even back then, so that would be 2007, 2008, it was still possible already to crack your software. Mm. So I, yeah. I would crack FL Studio, FL Studio 7, um, and they would, uh, yeah, I just had a couple friends who told me about the program. I was getting very intrigued and I just gave it a shot because I, I always had wanted to do music, but obviously like I was skateboarding all the time. Plus I didn't have the time nor the, the interest in really going to guitar lessons, for instance. I was never really patient like that, but I always loved doing things on my computer, like mm-hmm. editing skateboarding videos, like mm-hmm. all these little things, a little more nerdy. Sure. sure. And um, so making music through a software program, it just made so much sense mm-hmm. to me to do it that way. So that's how that started. Um, and I had a good friend who made old school hip hop music himself. And uh, he taught me like for like half a year on and off, like he would give me tips and I would send my stuff to him. It would be like, oh, now you got to add like this sound there and then maybe you should sample this and then you can create these kind of patterns or whatever. And um, yeah, man, that's how that started about. So What's the, the, his, what was yeah. his name? What, what was, is he still making beats? Is Arlen? No, he's no. not. No, no, unfortunately not. We kind of lost contact. Yeah. Like, but Anyway, uh, my first beats were just, I made them to to be used in the skateboard videos we mm. would create. Because I couldn't skate, but I still wanted to be part of my friend group. Because right. like, these were my best friends. I still wanted to contribute to whatever we were building, what so we were doing together. you were together. helping them ca- create the skate videos and, yeah. the, and the music background music yeah. for it. Yeah. So, but t- tell me a little bit about during that injury. Yeah. Let's, okay, let's not just like focus always on the the successful journey and the steps that, you know, got mm-hmm. us to where we are. But there had to be a moment, there was there had to be a pivotal moment right there yeah. where you said, I had to contribute. I had to contribute somehow. I had yeah. to contribute creatively somehow, whether it's like video editing, music, whatever, to, to, the, to, this, to the thing you love, which was skateboarding. Tell me a little bit like mentally, emotionally. Yeah that transition that though that moment was you know can you can i kind of explain yeah it? i you, mean how what, what were the challenges during so that time for you i definitely think the challenge of course was accepting that the dream of being a professional skateboarder that i used to have was not gonna probably not gonna happen because i knew because i knew like I, I might get out of this injury but i will never be able to really jump stairs again like that kind of stuff so I kind of had to embrace that, and that kind of got me down pretty bad for for quite a bit. Um, obviously, like it's it's your life; it's like kind of what drives you, what drives your social life as well. So that definitely hurt. Um, and then I think, you know, whenever, and that's just my way of coping with pain, like that. And it's it still to this day; it's it's the way I, I cope with it. Is whenever I'm in pain. I first feel it for for a little while mm-hmm. and then my my brain slowly starts like going pretty quickly like let's say I'm like I'm two weeks into hearing I can't skate forever I, like I, I will never be able to skate again it will take me two two weeks of feeling bad and then my, my brain will start rolling will start putting up gears and it's like looking for solutions like okay mm-hmm. w- what what's next what's next what's next and then I just all these ideas start com- start coming up how I can flip it to a positive thing. Uh I would still go skateboarding but I would only do wheelies. All day I would do wheelies. So I was the, I was the fucking wheelie master <laughs> of the whole probably of the whole country. I could do like 4 minute 
wheelies, wheelies on the skateboard. Yeah, no kidding. There's even a like an old ass video of me doing a three and a half wheelie, a three and a half minute wheelie through a whole skateboard, going off the hill, like making making turns and everything, all on like two wheels. So I would always, and that's still to this day, like I said, the way I do it, I will always try and flip something negative to something positive. Right. Um, and but that's, not, not yeah. everyone has that um, ability to shift. Yeah. Not everyone has that ability to shift. For some people, that could be like a very devastating moment yeah, for them, yeah. and could take them into like a really really negative direction, oh, yeah. really bad path, yeah. you know? What what would you say, um, what would you say helped you, mm. you know, helped you, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, so definitely what helped me is having like a stable environment to mm. grow up in. Uh, I mean, we didn't have much money or whatever, but mm -hmm. my parents were together, they were happy. My mm -hmm. brother was happy, he was doing yeah. his thing. Um, I, had a, I, I grew up in a in a fine neighborhood, you know, like I think these kind of things, they gave you, they 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 can, they probably gave me like the, maybe maybe not, but that's the thing that comes like like that comes to mind right away. Is that 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 might have been definitely a big reason why I was able to turn thing like flip things over. You had the ability to reassess. Yeah. You had the luxury of yeah. being able to reassess yeah. your your options yeah. in your future. Yeah. You know? Good education options. You know, so um yeah, almost like being privileged in a way like that, I think definitely made it easier. Of course, it also comes with character traits. Um but uh, not see when it's I think people can grow up in a very stable mm -hmm. home. They could have all the opportunities available to them but it's there still needs to be that element in someone to actually like attack it to yeah. actually like take advantage of opportunities and actually ex executing executing, executing yeah. like opportunity of availability is much different than executing on the opportunity yeah and you need a lot of interpersonal skills you need a lot of like uh, the the you need to have the openness and the ability to constantly be learning, yeah, educating oh, sure. yourself. Yeah. Um, what would you say to people? What would you say to like? What would you say to creatives that maybe don't have all of the opportunities in front of them? Mm -hmm. And um, what would you at? What would you tell them to focus on? What would, what would you ask them to focus on while mm -hmm. while they're waiting for the opportunities yeah. to, to to come forth? Um, what would you tell them to focus on? Maybe even from a just a personal like wellness from perspective. Yeah, education. so obviously like take care of yourself first. Yeah. Uh, before taking care of anyone else, because mm -hmm. you can only take care of anyone else if you're doing well yourself. Right. Um, but I would say the thing I touched on uh, earlier in this conversation, where the reason I started selling beats was trying to kind of taking control of my own destiny didn't really want to wait for opportunities or because I, I wasn't even I didn't even know what kind of opportunities I would have to look out for because I was in the Netherlands anyway so there wasn't like the hip hop I wanted to hear wasn't being made um, so take control of your own destiny through whatever means you do have uh, whatever um, whatever you can come up with it, it's it's almost like a creative thing where you have to think outside the box, especially if you're if you have limitations. Especially if you probably if you grow up in a in a in a neighborhood that's not as good, or you yeah. have uh, like a very complicated family situation. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a creative being, mm -hmm. if you're truly a creative being, that is des that is destined to do creative work. Um, trust on that creative creativity, especially if you're already making music. You are already top at least like top 10 percent creative people in the world so you probably already got this creative mind going might as well use it for anything in life might as well use it to maybe in some way um create a better situation for yourself um sure. it's tough for me to kind of speak on that of course yeah. because i feel yeah. Yeah. a certain privilege but having but, having a, a solid like uh, environment of, of people that support you and love you um, is really huge and I yeah. think we, we do we do get caught up um, sometimes 
not by not on purpose, but but sometimes by accident, being surrounded by the people that can actually like weigh us down oh, yeah. and bring a lot of negativity yeah. into our lives. And I think um, it's important it's important to find your community. It's yeah. important to find your tribe, find people that are um, inspired and trying to achieve a lot of the same goals. And I think with today's world and how accessible everything is, you could do it digitally. You could do it, um, you know, in person. Um, yeah. And it's it's energy. Energy is big, right? Energy yeah. is big, right? So like Huge. C- connecting connecting with other other creatives has probably uh, helped you along the way too. Tell me, tell me a little bit about like some of the other like collaborators or creative people that you've worked with that made a really big impact on your creative process or your, your, yeah. your ability to like express yourself. Yeah. So, um, it was around 2017 where I kind of felt like I, I was actually, honestly, like in 2017, I was kind of, I was kind of burning out on only doing online beats. Mm-hmm. So I felt like, okay, mm-hmm. I got to change something. I, I got to, I got to exchange real energy with people. Uh, obviously going to Austin was a, was a big part of that decision mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. do that. Uh, but also, uh, I decided to start working with artists in the Netherlands more. I was like, okay, let me look into who I can work with. Who do I really fuck with? Why do I fuck with them? And let's see what we can make happen. And actually, in 2017, this 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 uh, this artist Joost uh, was coming up in the Netherlands. He had like a couple of big big songs, like one or two. And I was really digging his vibe. And I, I recognized him because he used to comment on my YouTube videos. Like in 2011, 2012, he would always comment like, oh, dope beat, whatever. And at some point I saw him like blow up. Nice. I was like, whoa, what? I'm checking out his content because he was doing like really cool YouTube videos, like funny videos as well. And I really dig the style. So I was like, okay, let me keep an eye on him. And like a couple months pass by and I see like, okay, he's real serious about this. Let me hit him up. Cause like, I felt like I, I have the experience to kind of bring his music further. Uh, so we started collaborating with him, uh, collaborating with some other uh, people, a female singer from the Netherlands with whom I actually won uh, a Dutch song of the year in 2019. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, but anyway, especially working with Yoast, uh, so that's J O O S T, mm-hmm. um, has helped me a lot with um, understanding and um, yeah, feeling that interpersonal energy in the studio while being while creating. And that I, I found that that's so important to me actually, way more than I thought. I always thought like I'm a, I'm a huge introvert. I I don't need anyone. Just give me my computer. Give me my studio. I'm gonna just upload beats and. I'm good. I'll just send out beat packs or whatever. Um, but I found like, damn, for me to thrive and really get myself energetically to a next level where I'm like able to put in so much focus and so much dedication into my craft that I can actually take it to the next level, actually reach the goals that I might be scared to actually dream of because it's just like maybe too high. Um, he definitely gave me a lot of insight in why that's how that's how that's so important for me. We had a, we had a couple of huge uh, songs in the Netherlands. We even did a uh, KFC commercial, which was on air for one and a half years on TV. Uh, the last one and a half years, it just got taken off, um, and it also inspired me to kind of seek these same connections with other producers I had been talking to the last. 12 years Mm -hmm. because i met Mm -hmm. so many people online Mm -hmm. um people like dancing beats who even flew out to meet me when i was in austin in 2017 for a couple days um like there's so many producers that i was just like damn i'm actually friends with these guys but i did i've never seen them i maybe facetimed them with them once or something like that and through the years i definitely learned that if you build a physical connection with someone even if it's just for one hour just drinking one coffee drinking one beer making music for two hours um it changes your whole dynamic of of the friendship you build uh, online Mm -hmm. so for instance the reason the main reason why i'm in the united states right now is to just meet all these people i became friends with all these amazingly creative people 
stoic beats, dancing beats, uh, pilot kid. Like there's there's so many mm-hmm. talented producers out there and artists also yeah. where who I've been talking to, uh, who I've been working with uh, online, who I'm now trying to just meet, exchange energy with, right. um, and um, yeah, to kind of give it a an actual place in my consciousness rather than just in my online consciousness right Right. it's an evolution it's an evolution of you know the the you know creatives can't be locked up in one space they have to you know make meets in different cities and different places with different people and and um it helps it helps you evolve with your sound and your in your um in your brand and and you can't do that without money and you can't do that without a successful independent business right you can't do that without yeah. building something about without building a really strong foundation you know i think in in the past i guess with the traditional way of kind of like music industry you know people didn't get into the studio and travel and meet each other in different mm-hmm. places and and do this until they were signed yeah until they got signed yeah, right? yeah that was they, the thing <laughs> until they got signed and had the opportunities yeah, yeah. you're doing this independently yeah. right you're doing this on your own yeah. dime yeah. You're, you wake up every day and I'm like, I'm going to go to the Canary Islands. I'm going to go yeah. <laughs> to England and I'm going to go collaborate and I'm going to go to, Ger- I'm going to go live in Berlin. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go, right. That's another part of your journey. Yeah. Right? So I, I moved to Berlin last year. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, these are like amazing, amazing milestones, especially for a creator that started yeah. online. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. Started online. Yeah. But you're still maintaining that foundation and you're still maintaining that business and you're still nurturing it and you're still building it. You're not ignoring it. You're just, um, adding to it. You're yeah. adding to it. You're yeah. adding to the experiences. It just helps with, it helps with the, the other, you know, the, the, the creative flow of what your, your, your beat store would sound like in the future. I'm sure, you know, it these, empowers these, me to yeah. do this. So me finding out like, Oh, I need physical connections to people to really flower, to really flourish. I'm happy I already did the groundwork to be and being like an independent producer and independent entrepreneur, because yeah. otherwise I would have not I would have probably not had the freedom to do it. Because I've been, right now I've been traveling. I've been on the road for like seven weeks already. I went to the Canary Islands for a month, yeah. went to Amsterdam for a week, flew to out to LA. Right now in Austin, back to LA. Two weeks from now I'll be in Minneapolis, back to LA, mm-hmm. back to Amsterdam, back to Berlin. That's like my that's my like my that's travel good. plan right now i couldn't have done that if i would have a regular job right. if i would have like these kind of responsibilities yeah. so really yeah. being an entrepreneur and being an independent entrepreneur on beat stars uh made it possible for me to get these dreams that i only found found out about in 2017 like oh this is actually what i really want to do to actually make them happen so I mean, you know, like you start with one reason and it might tra- like it might like tr- transition into another one, but it's always good to f- to put energy in the business yeah. to me because I never know what I'm uh, needed for. You know, Tensu, you know, your journey is so interesting too to me, you know, because there wasn't like a major campaign that you went viral and you found your success, right? It was like over, it wasn't like an overnight type of like success. Mm -hmm. It was, it was the journeyman journey. It was like the, you know, the blue collar journey, you know, you, you built it brick by brick by brick. And it took some, you know, took, 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 took a long time, long time, long time. But you've, you, what would you, what would you like, what would you say? What would you say to, um, a young creator right now that that wants to make a living doing what they love doing with with the art that they make um what would you say um in regards to the commitment that they need to yeah. develop their craft and then execute on the business side yeah what what are what are some of the key components to making that happen yeah for you um i would say however small your niche may be if it excites you just double down on it whatever whatever it is even if there's no one making money through that niche yet um that's definitely a big thing i would also say 
um actually like something i would advise younger people now is like if you can't figure it out write about it journal about it journal about have a conversation with yourself mm. and meditate on it like literally sit down for 15 minutes close your eyes watch your breath and see what insights your brain will give you and if you're younger it's it's hard to kind of see meditation like that in a it's kind of an old people thing right or like a yeah. spiritual people yeah. thing but yeah. i'm not sure how, how kids nowadays look at that shit but right. i feel like that helped me the past years and i think if i sh if i started that doing if i, if I started doing that way earlier mm. oh man like i would have been even further you would have cleared out the noise oh yeah man there's so much noise especially for younger people growing up now man they everyone is on tiktok all the time like all their friends are uh, I mean, I didn't have a smartphone until I was 18, so that's 10 years ago. Um, so I can only imagine like how hard it is to find focus nowadays. Also, if you're 15 and you're you you can kind of have a feeling like, oh, I want to be a producer because I see these guys on on TikTok all the time making cool beats. I want to do that too, but uh, I gotta go to soccer practice and I gotta do this and that and and kind of if you're able to explain to your parents or your your caretakers or whoever is like is kind of deciding your time for you if you're if you're able to explain to them why you want to do what you want to do you can probably convince them to that you can convince them to a way further extent than you probably think right now yeah maybe an original take on it but, but what about <laughs> from the you know it's a business right yeah and um you're selling products you're selling digital products yeah. you're selling um you know, this is the world marketplace that we live in. Yeah. Um, you're very intentional, though, about the music you make. You're very intentional yeah. about the music you make. Yeah. You know, we all have a signature to our products, right? Yeah. And we all have a signature. Yeah. Like, there's some some features and products on BeatStars. If you, you guys don't know, but if you look through it and you're like, Oh, that's Abe's touches all over it. That's Abe's, yeah, that's Abe's paintbrush, yeah. right? That's oh, Abe's, that's my I'm paintbrush. Sure. I'm a product person, yeah. right? That's Abe's paintbrush. Yeah. And there's some things there that I've executed on that will live forever, maybe, hopefully. You know, it's impacted Word. people's forever. And and I'm very intentional about the products I make. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you're creating, when you're creating these, these digital products mm -hmm. that are pieces of art, you yeah. know, um, where does your like where does your strategy go like where does your strategy go when you're i'm sure in the beginning it was much different than it is today yeah but today if you could tell yourself 10 years ago when you first kind of went on this journey if you could tell yourself 10 years ago to kind of uh um locate what that strategy is and yeah. what are kind of what are the uh initiatives yeah. to take to take what what where would you go in regards to your sound and your product where would I go or how yeah. would I explain how it would to you, How would you package it? How would I package it? Um, I mean, obviously, your taste, your, your kind of your, your, your media taste, your cultural taste, like whatever excites you, is your style or mm -hmm. will probably become your style no matter what because you want to contribute to the thing that excites you, like naturally. So if, if you... Because uh, you're trying to... To... It's so confusing, you know, because it's like for me, it's just, um, like you said, so much noise mm -hmm. and it's so much like false information that's being put out there and everyone's being kind of influenced to push a certain yeah. sound or a certain genre, a certain like, so some people get into beat making just because someone said it was cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Right, just yeah, because yeah. someone said it was cool to do, yeah. not because they wanted to express themselves with the music and the, and, and the canvas that they wanted to put yeah. out there. So, but you've been able to 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 find you. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, you you dabble into different genres and different different oh, different yeah, different sure. types of sound, yeah. different type of A music. Lot. Sure, yeah. you touch it all. You touch West Coast. You're into like chill, lo-fi. You're you're into it all, but there's still that tantu signature. Yeah. That quality signature. Yeah, it's a quality signature for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. Sometimes people even... How do you find that? Yeah. How do you find that? Um, and use it part of your, you know, as part of your yeah. strategy. Because when you're making a beat, 
you're thinking about the consumer, right? You're thinking about the consumer oh, yeah. too. You're not just like making yeah. the beat because you, this is, I mean, you are yeah. expressing yourself and you're making the music that you want to yeah. make, but subconsciously you're also thinking about the consumer. hundred percent. You're of thinking course. about the consumer. Of course. And my consumer would be an artist, of course. Yeah. So the, the person who consumes my beat. Yeah. Uh, usually. Um, Cause guys are all over the place. Yeah. They're all over the place. Yeah. People, you know, you got to find something, like I said before, something that, just genuinely that that sparks as like as much as possible interest to you that's like as interesting as possible to you and kind of roll with that because you cannot do anything maybe i i enjoy creating ambience music as well but i i don't enjoy it that much that i'm gonna like do it as well right or mixing i like i like mixing songs but i decided okay the only songs i'm gonna mix are the songs I produce myself. I, I add it into my service. So for instance, it, 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 it gives an, an artist another reason to work with me. So if, if it's an artist that like I really fuck with, it might like, it might strengthen the connection. I might be able to yeah. give them something extra, but it's hard. Cause like you can, you can let the commercial world decide for you. Like, Oh, this is what, what you got to do. Cause this is popping right now. Yeah. Or, or I, you tried, you tried making five different beats and one of those five was like they're all in this in different styles and one of those five was like doing really well they were it's selling really well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can keep doing that but definitely look inward as well where like where you're like okay the process that it took to get to this product is that a process that fulfills me yeah it's like going out and in so uh what i what i do for my style so I just really look at the process, like, okay, what's the process that fulfills me the most? And then there's the commercial world out there. Where's the middle ground? Um, Cause I, I also get a lot of happiness from making a living through music. So that's also worth changing the pro process for a little bit. Um, so it's, it's like the, the, yeah, like I said, the middle ground between the, the creative process you you enjoy going through because you know like if you're not if if making a beat within one hour doesn't fulfill you because you feel like oh i can do more uh but you still want to produce for artists maybe you shouldn't do trap beats maybe you should do more like uh whatever type beat like yeah. uh, there are so many types so of find your sound community too kind of find, yeah. a, find your find yeah. the community that you belong to in yeah regards, in regards find, to sound. find a sound find. that maybe takes seven hours to to nail and feel more fulfilled feel more fulfilled because then you're going to do it again and and again if you don't feel fulfilled you'll be like ah oh, let me look at my phone let me i'm just right. going to do this and that right. and you won't find the focus you need to get there because there's a lot of competition out there in the music world and there's a lot of people who are super focused yeah um the only thing you owe you owe yourself is finding your own focus yeah. man you're you're a testament to a successful independent musician and you you really are uh, an inspiration to to a lot of young people to know like what's possible you know and thanks man there's so many so many people um especially young people you know because it's private you know making income is private sometimes sometimes making you know it's not the coolest thing to it's not the coolest thing to, to tell the world you know it's tell the world how yeah. much, how much yeah, money yeah, yeah, you're yeah. making and like it's some some of these things are private but i think it's very important for people to you know hear your journeyman journey right mm -hmm. and to know that there it could also be a lucrative like financial yeah, for journey sure. for yeah, yourself yeah. too and people sure. you know um you don't have to talk about, you know, the amount of money, but how how does it feel that you can utilize a, a platform and a technology mm -hmm. like BeatStars and build a, build a consistent cash flow for you that enables yeah. you to go and continue to um, explore your art in different places in different ways and connect with with folks. Yeah, how how that feels to me. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> right. I yeah. mean. It's it's great to be able to make a living, to be able to make a a grander living than is that a word even sure. a, a bigger living we'll than it. you would have expected from life anyway, uh, coming from like just a regular middle class uh, household or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, that's that's all bonus, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like me making a living is that was like one of the biggest goals, and I already reached that in 2013. So that's it's been it's it's been a while. Yeah. Um, but all the other like the extras y you earn. So for instance, uh, in 2020, I, I had my first year where I had like a six figure income. Yeah. Um, Congrats. and that's like, it, it changes a lot about the way you think about the world as well. And like the opportunities you, you kind of see, it's like, Oh wait, I never thought I would be able to do this, but now I kind of have the funds right. to do it. Might as well give it a shot. Cause like I'm in this privileged position and, uh, yeah, man, I'm really thankful to you yeah. and to BeatStars Appreciate you, man. that um, you guys are providing a platform, not only for me, but the hundreds, the thousands of lives you guys have have changed uh, and kind of empowered. Because I feel like without that, there would so there would be so how do I, how do how do I put that? There would be so many more producers struggling out there, yeah. especially the producers who are living remote remote in remote areas right. in whatever country they're living in uh, you, you know it yourself mm -hmm. they're they're from everywhere and i i just think that i feel blessed for them and i feel blessed for myself to be part of that movement and that being the driving force to me living the best possible life bro it was so awesome having you here with me telling bro telling me your, your story <laughs> your journey um please come back to austin don't don't wait another three four years i know this pandemic oh, sure. yeah but uh thank you congratulations on everything you've accomplished for in, in, in inspiring not just me but so many other creatives around the world man and thank you for being on this podcast brother thank you man yes sir on to the next beats. one <laughs> appreciate you man appreciate you man yes sir stars the foundation the precedence we flying flags in every city global residence and we killing off the masters ghetto slave driving bastards we making hits faster than you can think we're on the brink of revolution all my indie music makers here's your restitution uh we got the game in a chokehold not paying the creators is a no-no i got the smoke road for all the fan band